For some of us, the folklore surrounding the creatures of Halloween have been with us since childhood, and even if they haven't, they've haunted us in our dreams one time or another. Happy Halloween everyone, and if you don't celebrate it, then I don't know what to tell you, but those who do celebrate it know how exciting it is, for the most part. It's not so much for me anymore, save for the pumpkin carving. Since four of you requested ghost tricks appropriately enough for the next Yu-Gi-Oh! Did You Know, they shall be our DYK Halloween special. Although there are a lot more monsters in the ghost trick archetype than I'd like to cover, I've decided that today's a special occasion, so why not cover all of them? So gather round boys and ghouls and learn the history behind the ghost trick archetype. Inspired by concepts of galvanism, English author Mary Shelley began writing about a mad scientist's efforts to reanimate a corpse by using electrical currents. In the novel, scientist Victor Frankenstein inevitably succeeds, breathing life into the patchworked monster we know as Frankenstein. Never referred to as human, Frankenstein is often identified with dehumanizing terms such as creature and fiend. No one knows mummies better than the Egyptians, deriving from the Latin word mummia, which means embalmed corpse. The art of mummification played an important role in ancient Egyptian religion, as it was believed that a well-preserved body enabled someone to live well in the afterlife. The process of mummification varied, but usually consisted of disembowelment or the removal of important organs, and the wrapping of the body in essential minerals and oils. Werewolves or lycanthropes stem from European folklore and are thought to be afflicted souls cursed with the ability to shapeshift into either a man with wolf-like qualities or a full-on wolf. After much research, it was discovered that depending on which culture was asked, different stories of werewolf accounts were given. While Indo-European folklore supports our most common knowledge of werewolves, Greek mythology shares the story of how the first wolfman came to be. Lycon, king of Arcadia, killed a child and served the meat to Zeus in order to see if Zeus was truly all-seeing. Knowing that Lycon served him the meat of an innocent child, Zeus punishes him by transforming him into a wolf and kills all fifty of his sons. However, in Norse mythology, such werewolves were not considered beasts at all, but were berserker warriors dressed in wolf skins. Being a berserker meant that the warriors suffered from fits of rage, in which they later forgot what had occurred once their episode was done. Paired with their belief that dressing in the skins of animals enhanced their abilities, it is no wonder why it is said that those afflicted with lycanthropy forgot the monster they had become. Bones, it's what's left of us when all flesh has melted away and nothing represents death better than the final form of decay. Personifying death, Ghost Trick's skeleton is undoubtedly inspired by the Grim Reaper, who appears as a hooded skeletal figure carrying a large scythe. He is described as the Reaper of Souls, however some stories tell of the Reaper's interference being the causation of a death. Either case, it is also said that the unfortunate soul who has the encounter with the Grim Reaper are welcome to bribe, trick, or outwit the skeletal figure in order to keep their life. <sighs> Defined as a monster or spirit who delights in the consumption of human flesh, 
Ghouls are often classified as being one of the undead with a score to settle with the living. In Arabian folklore, ghouls are desert-dwelling, shape-shifting demons who lure unwary people into the desert in order to kill and devour them. While making its home in the burial grounds and other uninhabited places, it is believed that ghouls defile a grave by stealing treasures, such as coins, and eating the bodies of the deceased. Eating individuals grants the ghouls to transform into the most recently eaten person, which they then utilize to lure familiars of the deceased to the same fate. It should also be mentioned that while the term ghoul is predominantly associated with flesh-eating monsters, the term may also be used in a derogatory sense to describe someone who delights in professions directly linked to death, as well as refer to those who are greedy and gluttonous individuals. Taking a Chinese spin off of ghouls are the hopping, animated corpses called Yang Shis. Yang Shis are depicted as well-dressed yet stiff corpses that hop after their prey with outstretched arms. Much like vampires, Yang Shis are only active at night. Shrouded by shadows, the Yang Shis use their cover to search for living victims, in which they can absorb their ki or life force from. Yetis are the legendary Bigfoots of the Himalayas, also known as abominable snowmen. Yetis are described as being ape-like bipeds by natives of Nepal and Tibet. Initially worshipped as the glacier beings by the Himalayan people, the Yeti quickly transitioned from mythology to becoming an unsolved mystery as the frequency of supposed sightings increased at the turn of the 20th century. Are you a good witch or a bad witch? Who, me? I, I'm not a witch at all. I'm Dorothy Gale from Kansas. Oh. Well, is that the witch? Oh, Toto? Toto's my dog. <laughs> well, I'm a little muddled. The munchkins call me because a new witch has just dropped a house on the Wicked Witch of the East. And there's the house. And here you are. And that's all that's left of the Wicked Witch of the East. <gasps> So, what the munchkins want to know is, are you a good witch or a bad witch? Oh, but I've already told you, I'm not a witch at all. Witches are old and ugly. What was that? The munchkins. They're laughing because I am a witch. I'm Glinda, the witch of the north. Witches are practitioners in witchcraft, and while we stereotype witches to be evil and revolting, it really did depend on which social group they belonged to. Just for the sake of separation, a witch could belong to a social group which practices forbidden sorcery, such as necromancy and possession, just as easily as they could belong to a group which uses their abilities for good, such as shamanism and healing. Either way, such knowledge of any art was considered esoteric or rare and secret knowledge that only few knew and were willing to share. But because witchcraft had a much more negative connotation in the early modern period, Paranoia and the fear of evil led many church-based societies to turn against their neighbors during the time of the witch trials. Deriving from Japanese folklore, the Yukiya Ona is often depicted as a tall, beautiful woman with long black hair and inhumanly pale skin. In some legends, she wears a kimono that blends into the landscape, while other legends describe her as being nude with only her face standing out against the snow. Not all legends agree on how the Yukiona came to be, but most agree that she is most likely the spirit of someone who perished in the snow. The behavior of the Yukiona also varies from legend to legend. Most will, however, agree that she is a rather unpredictable ghost, as the Yukiona's behavior constantly switches between being peaceful and serene, to killing unsuspecting mortals caught in snowstorms. Neko Musume means the daughter of a cat, although the literal translation of Neko Musume is cat daughter or cat girl. Such cat girls typically display cat-like behaviors, exhibiting traits such as playfulness and mischievousness. With many animes depicting attractive female cat characters, many cosplaying cat girls wear Neko Mimis or cat ears in order to express their playful personalities.
Making an appearance between the 1860s and 1900s, the French and the Germans created an industry that sold bisque dolls characterized by their realistic, skin-like matte finish. Also known as porcelain and china dolls, bisque dolls were originally made solely for collectors. However, with bisque dolls equipped with creepy yet realistically expressive childlike appearances, it is to no surprise that the entertainment industry has lately gotten inspiration from them. Jack Frost is much like the Yuki Ona in that they are both associated with the cold and snow. However, that's where the similarities end. Often depicted as a young man who is carefree and is without any major obligations, save for the fact that he is responsible for turning the leaves in the autumn, Jack is the happiest when he can behave however he pleases. Although he is generally a friendly spirit, it is discouraged to speak ill of him as it usually results in the provoker being frozen or buried till death in snow. Named after the phenomenon of strange lights flickering in the darkness, jack-o'-lanterns are inspired by will-o'-the-wisps. Although the origin of jack-o'-lantern carvings is uncertain, in the 19th century parts of Ireland as well as the Scottish Highlands were said to have carved grotesque faces on pumpkins and gourds and placed them near their doorway to keep spirits out of their homes during the time in which souls were able to cross over into the mortal world. Also known as a specter, phantom, or an apparition, ghosts are generally believed to be the soul or spirit of the departed, believed to haunt locations in which they were strongly associated to in life. Descriptions of ghosts vary, although they are generally described as barely visible figures or invisible presences altogether. It should also be mentioned that should one fiddle with the Ouija board, one is partaking in a seance which may or may not endanger the lives of the participants. <laughs> now, while Bloody Mary is said to appear in the mirror when her name is called three times, depending on where someone is from, Bloody Mary's nature can vary. In some legends, Bloody Mary is a harmless spirit that either reveals the face of the woman's future husband in the mirror, or a skull to represent that the woman will die before she is married. However, in other legends, Bloody Mary is an evil spirit that appears covered in blood and tries to kill or steal the soul of those who summon her. If by spoiled you mean you enjoy being an angel that was cast out of heaven due to your rebellious and wicked ways, then yes, you are indeed spoiled. Inspired by the classic fallen angel, Ghost Trick Spoiled Angel represents those angels that freely chose to defy God and follow Lucifer. Perhaps that is a conversation for another time. Allow me to... Reintroduce myself. I am Count Vladislaus Dragulia. Written in 1897 by the English writer Bram Stoker, 
Dracula is a story of a vampire's attempt to move from Transylvania to England so that he may find new blood and spread the curse. Although Dracula is a work of fiction, within it contains historical references, such as who inspired Dracula. Now if you've already watched the newest Dracula movie, this may not be any news to you. However, if you have not, listen up. Born to Vlad II Dracul, the Transylvanian-born Vlad III appends the name Dracula, which means that he is the son of Dracul. Described as a sort of lord, or count if you will, Vlad was said to have impaled 40 to 100,000 people he deemed useless to humanity, earning him the title of Vlad the Impaler. Although he was ruthless in many ways, he was generally revered as a hero by his subjects for fending off the invading Ottoman Turks, in which he impaled as well. Although the nature of Dracula tends to vary throughout the sectors of the entertainment industry, he has definitely defined the modern-day vampire. Described as being a female demon or supernatural entity, a succubus typically appears in the dreams of men and takes the form of a woman in order to seduce them through sexual activity. Although a succubus may take the form of a beautiful young woman, closer inspection may reveal deformities such as bird claws or serpentine tails. In many cultures, sexual activity with such demons, succubus for men, incubus for women, were believed to have begotten children with deformities or unexplainable abnormalities. Such children then, if they were born, were believed to have been deformed because of their unnatural conception. <laughs> Galloping out of the legend of Sleepy Hollow is the legendary Headless Horseman. Best known as the pursuer of Ichabod Crane, Ghost Trick Dullahan gets its name from the titular figure depicted as the headless rider of a black stallion, or the headless driver of a black carriage. It is said that when the Dullahan stops riding, a name is called out, at which point the named individual instantly dies. And that concludes our Halloween edition of Yu-Gi-Oh! Did You Know? Featuring Ghost Tricks. First off, I want to give thanks to those who requested this archetype. Ghost Tricks couldn't have been more appropriate. Second, I want to thank all my viewers who continue to show their support of these videos. Giving me the thumbs up really does bring a smile to my face knowing my work is appreciated. As usual, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and if there's an archetype you're interested in learning about, please leave it in the comments below. Until next time, AMG out!